In this video, we are going to revise algebraic fractions and we'll extend our knowledge about them as well. But first, let's uh, go over the meaning of the word simplification in the context of algebraic fractions. Uh, simplifying a fraction means either um, reducing the fraction to its lowest terms or it may mean adding or subtracting several fractions to make them one. Let's start by looking at how to reduce fractions. If you have a fraction such as 2x plus 6 equals 2 and you want to simplify it, there is a common mistake which I will write in red. Let's say somebody says I will cancel out the 2. It's not red anymore. I will cancel out the 2 with the 2 and then the answer will be x plus 6. This is totally wrong and it's absolute nonsense. The reason is 2x plus 6 all divided by 2 means that this is a shortcut for 2x over 2 plus 6 over 2. And if you simplify those two fractions, each on its own, you get the 2 cancels out with the 2, you get an x, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So the answer is x plus 3. But this is not how we would deal with this fraction, because it's written in a shorthand form, so we do not have to write it in this um, detailed way. The way we deal with it is that we take a common factor. So we, we have to make sure that both the numerator and denominator are factorized. And in this case, 2x plus 6 is simply 2 times x plus 3. So the numerator now is factorized. And now we can cancel the 2 with the 2, giving us x plus 3. Let's look at this fraction. It's in expanded form, so I cannot cancel out. I need to put it in factorized form. I need to factorize the numerator and the denominator. So we have to go back to our previous knowledge about factorization. The difference of two squares gives me x minus 2 times x plus 2. And factorizing quadratics shows me that this is x plus 2 times x plus 3. Now we have a factorized numerator and a factorized denominator. Now we can cancel out the common factors. So x plus 2 cancels out with the x plus 2. And your answer is x minus 2 divided by x plus 3. Note that the brackets are not necessary anymore because in fractions, we have what we call an invisible bracket. So it's as if you have a bracket around the numerator and a bracket around the denominator. Even if you don't write them, they are there. So the idea is, before cancelling out, make sure that you have factorized the numerator and the denominator. Now let's consider some tricks and shortcuts. Sometimes you want to divide a fraction such as 5 over x minus 3 by 2. What I find is that some people will write it in this form. Now even though this is correct, it is not at all practical. We will deal with this form in a while, but let's see how we can divide this fraction by 2. We can think about it in the very long way and say this is effectively 5 over x minus 3 divided by 2. And when you want to divide fractions, this becomes 5 over x minus 2 times the reciprocal of the 2 which is a half, 
which will give you 5 divided by 2 times x minus. So this is x minus 3, and this would be x minus 3 as well. This is true because division by 2 is the same as multiplying by a half. But I'm proposing a shortcut, and that's dividing a fraction by x or anything is equivalent to multiplying the denominator by x or that something. So in this case, when we want to divide 5 over x minus 3 by 2, we can simply move directly to this answer, which is 2 multiplied by the denominator of the 5x minus 3. And that's one quick uh, shortcut that it, it, it's nice to know. It saves time. Now let's go back to this case where you have fraction lines. You need to distinguish between the following examples. A over B divided by C. If you want to think about this with multiple fraction lines, this is A over B, and there's a bigger line than divided by C. This is what A over B divided by C means. This is because of the so-called invisible brackets. There is an invisible bracket here, so effectively this is the numerator. On the other hand, a divided by b over c is a totally different expression. And the way to write this is a with a, the main fraction line divided by b over c. Now at the face of it, if you look at those two fractions, you might think that they are the same because it's a divided by b divided by c a divided by b divided by c. But the main fraction line is what really makes all the difference. It stands for the division. And if you want to evaluate this, a divided by b divided by c, we're dividing a fraction by something. So immediately we can say that this is equal to a divided by b c. We multiply the denominator by c. But in this case, we have to take one more step. This is the same as A times the reciprocal of B over C, which is C over B. And your answer is AC over B. And you notice that those two are definitely not the same, even though those two may look similar. So please pay attention to the way you write fractions and try to avoid those two forms in favor of those two forms. Even then, you may find fractions that come in a complicated way. For example, if you want to simplify x over 2 plus y over 4 all divided by z over 5. Now you might be tempted to deal with the numerator to add it and then make it a process of division multiplied by the reciprocal of z over 5. Now this will work. And let's do this quickly here. x over 2 plus y over 4 can be thought of as 2x over 4 multiplied by 2 over 2 plus y over 4 all divided by z over 5. This becomes 2x plus y over 4 divided by z over 5 which becomes 2x plus y divided by 4 times 5 over z giving you eventually 5 times 
2x plus y divided by 4z. Now this is absolutely correct, but it's so long and boring. The shortcut I'm proposing is to ask yourself, how can I get rid of the 2, 4, and the 5? They are all denominators. So if I multiply this fraction by something that cancels out the 2, 4, and the 5, that would be great. But since I cannot change the value of the fraction, I can only multiply it by 1, because that's the only way I can maintain its value. But I can disguise the 1 as something else. Now, if I multiply by the lowest common multiple of 2, 4, and 5, divided by the same number. Now, the lowest common multiple of 2, 4, and 5 is 20. Right? So let's put this down. That means that I can multiply by 20 over 20 because this is equal to 1. Therefore, mentally, I can think of this. Now, this step is something that you can do in your head. You're talking about 20 times x over 2 plus y over 4, all divided by 20 times z over 5. 20 times x over 2 is 10x. 20 times y over 4, the 4 cancels out with the 20 giving you a 5, so plus 5y, divided by 20 times z over 5, the 5 cancels out with the 20, leaving you with a 4z. And as I said, you can do this in your head. But look at the difference in the amount of work between this boring long method and this nice quick method. Let's do this very quickly. From here to here. 20 times x over 2 is 10x. 20 times y over 4 is 5y. 20 times z over 5 is 4z. And you've got the same answer. You may want to put them in the same format, and you, want to, you may want to factorize the numerator. Obviously, there is a 5, which is a common factor. And this is your 5 times 2x plus y divided by 4z. Those, are, those two are what we call equivalent formats. This is not only useful in algebra, it's also very useful with numbers. For example, if you're dealing with a half plus a third, all divided by, let's say, uh, 2 over 5 uh, plus, mm, say, uh, 5 over 6. The LCM of 2, 3, 5, and 6 is 30. So you multiply times 30 over 30. That leaves you with 30 times a half is 15. Plus 30 times a third is 10. Divided by 30 times 2 over 5, the 5 cancels out with the 30 leaving you a 6. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 30 times 5 over 6, the 30 cancels out with the 6 giving you a 5, times 5 is 25. So you have the answer as 25 divided by 37. A very nice and quick way. The main concept to remember is that you are multiplying the fraction by something that equals 1 and that's the only thing that you can use. The thing is you need to disguise 
the one as something divided by itself and that something divided by itself is what cancels out the fractions because it is the LCM of all the denominators.